The term green hydrogen isn't really new. It's been talked about for years and the conversation is only getting louder. Yes, there are pros and cons and plenty of debate over its cost and efficiency, but many still believe that green hydrogen could still be a game changer in the global climate fight. Hydrogen is currently a 100 million ton market. It is a $150 billion market and it is responsible for producing almost 1 billion tons of carbon dioxide emissions. Hydrogen is transformative, but it is not the one-stop solution. It is a molecule that can transform intermittent renewable energy into tradable renewable fuels where they are required. But it is a systems-based approach and a solution that we need for the energy transition. Green hydrogen is made by using renewable energy such as wind and solar to split water into hydrogen and oxygen in a process called electrolysis. And unlike grey or blue hydrogen, this method emits no direct carbon emissions. It sounds perfect, but scaling green hydrogen is expensive and complex, needing vast amounts of land, funding and time. And that's why companies such as Intercontinental Energy are reimagining how to build big hydrogen systems piece by piece. The problem with large projects is they become really complex. So what we had to do was find a way of doing large projects, but in bite-sized chunks that are repeatable, modular, and lower the complexity and risk. So if you imagine like Lego blocks, rather than doing a really complicated project, we can roll out Lego blocks in stages. And so what the node architecture does, it allows us to break up our huge projects into these bite-sized chunks to reduce the risk and therefore accelerate the delivery of the projects. Their node system aims to cut costs by 10 to 20 percent, a major step in a price-sensitive industry. But while ambition is high, progress is slow. Hydrogen is not yet the fuel of today and expectations may have outpaced reality. One of the issues we've had in hydrogen is unreal expectations of how quickly we can deliver. And so what we're now seeing is this period of, let's say, initial hype is over and the real projects are actually starting to be delivered. But they're being delivered in a realistic way, which means that we will scale over time and over decades and we will achieve what people want from us. But it's just we have to be also patient and honest about how we're going to do that. At that pace, hydrogen may only make up about 2% of global energy by 2050. Well, not flashy, but consistent with how every other clean energy technology has grown. In places like Western Australia, where intercontinental energy operates, the land is vast and ideal for mega green fuel projects. Australia is emerging as a green hydrogen powerhouse, not just in resources, but in vision and incentives. With partners such as BP, Shell and backing from GIC and High24, these projects are gearing up to export renewable fuels globally, including to Singapore, which is positioning itself to be a regional hub for hydrogen. Its strategic location and technological edge could help it emerge as a leader, even without vast land or sun. We have cheap green electrons in India, in China, in Southeast Asia, in many parts of our region where Singapore is situated right front and center, that we can think about making cheap green molecules with these renewable electrons. So this fundamental shift away from the petrol to the electro state is guiding not just a green premium, but a practical, pragmatic energy security supply rooted solution to decarbonization. So green hydrogen has a role to play. But I think those that saw it as a panacea or silver bullet, you know, I think their expectations have been a little bit too high. But that doesn't mean that the industry doesn't have huge potential and that it's necessary. And companies like ours, we understand that this isn't a sprint, it's a marathon. And you know, we're committed to the long term. The road ahead is long and results won't come overnight. But for those betting on the future, green hydrogen still holds promise. As countries face pressure to deliver real decarbonisation action at COP30 this year, the question now is whether green hydrogen could finally move from potential to proven climate solution. Ilakia Silveraji, CNA, Singapore.